So you're here because you want to know if you should make the plunge and get a full mirrorless setup for making YouTube videos, filming B-roll and creating content, or if you should grab some of those lenses that you've been seeing, link it onto your iPhone and go ahead and have a full video setup with the device that's already in your pocket. Let's talk about that and see which decision is best for you. Hey, what's going on? I'm Benji Kaiser, and this is where you find the best tech and tools for graphic designers and creative professionals. If you're new to the channel and that sounds like your kind of place, consider subscribing and mash down on that bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Today we're doing a bit of a different video. We're talking about creating and capturing content. As graphic designers, normally we're behind a computer and people are possibly sending content our way, but what happens when you're on the go, when you need to be capturing footage and pictures, you need to be maybe putting your content content out there and helping people get to know who you are so you can grow your influence and you can get more clients. And so you're trying to decide what camera to get in order to start capturing those sources and filming those videos and creating that content. Well, I'm super glad you're here because we're going to talk about some of the differences between each of these options. The first option that we're looking at right now is the iPhone 8 Plus using a Sandmark wide angle 16 millimeter lens. Now, this has been really great because it's allowed me to film all of the B roll on my latest video talking about the new Dell XPS 15. As you can see between the Dell XPS 15 video, which was shot on the Sandmark lens with the iPhone 8 Plus, versus the MacBook Pro footage, which was shot on my Fujifilm X-T2. Now, that Fujifilm X-T2 setup is around $2,300 MSRP. So it's not a cheap investment and the footage is slightly different. The one big opportunity that you have with mirrorless is far more customization and you're going to have a little bit stronger dynamic range. Now, the reason for the dynamic range is the image processor and the ability to use your aperture mixed with your shutter speed and ISO to really pull down that grain and that noise at low light situations. I filmed this footage at low light to really put this Sandmark lens and the iPhone to the test because that was kind of the most extreme situation I could think about that I film and create content. Now, one way I've been able to grab control of the settings of my iPhone to make it more like a mirrorless camera is using an app called Filmic. Now, Filmic allows me to take full control of the shutter speed, the ISO, the aperture, as well as the manual focus, the color grading. I could go on and on. There's a lot of great features that Filmic has that allows the Sandmark lens to do its job even better. One of the biggest benefits I saw versus the mirrorless camera is the ability to get up close with the 16 millimeter lens still get those really close sharp details but have a wide shot. If I wanted to do that with my mirrorless camera, I'd have to invest in a thousand plus dollar macro lens. Immediately I see something that the Sandmark and iPhone can do that would take a lot more money to accomplish with the mirrorless camera. If you're somebody who's kind of deciding between the two, think about the ability to capture a lot of different types of shots with just a few lens switches that are a lot less expensive than a mirrorless camera. Now, the one thing that I'm gonna talk about with the mirrorless camera, and I'm gonna actually switch over there right now, is the talking head portion of the video. Let's slide on over. All right, now we've switched over to the Fujifilm X-T2 mirrorless camera. And as you can see, one of the biggest differences is gonna be the ability to capture a high bit of dynamic range. And what dynamic range is, is if you're new to photography, videography, is the ability for your camera to capture highlights and darker tones. So imagine somebody who can have a really large vocal range when they're singing. They can sing very high and they can sing very low and it sounds good in the mix. That is the same thing with a good quality mirrorless camera with a nice large sensor or a very well crafted sensor is that it has the ability to reach that dynamic range. The iPhone, as good as it is, does not have that much dynamic range. Now, as you saw in my extreme testing between the Fujifilm and the iPhone when filming B-roll, I put this through a pretty, pretty intense test and it came out with really sharp very low grain, very low color distortion and color noise from the iPhone. So I'm very impressed with the iPhone and the San Mark. Don't get me wrong, but I'm trying to give a very fair comparison here. Now, to get started as a graphic designer wanting to capture your own sources or starting to put out your work on Instagram or starting to film YouTube tutorials and wanting to have a little bit of talking head, I think this right here, 
the iPhone with the same mark is a fantastic start. You're not gonna have to invest that $2,000 to get into a mirrorless setup. You can get two or three Sandmark lenses for a couple different shots. You can get a wide angle, a telephoto, and an anamorphic lens and be on your way for a few hundred dollars tops versus a few thousand dollars. So really the barrier to entry is a lot lower, which is one of the biggest benefits I see to going with the Sandmark. Shout out to them and thank you so much for them supplying us with this lens. All right, now I'm gonna swap back over to the iPhone. There are far more use cases for the iPhone Sandmark lens combination. However, this is the way that I use it most. And so I wanted to put it to the test, put some extreme pressure on it to see how well it handled it. And honestly, compared to the mirrorless camera, it really stood up to the challenge. A lot of times the biggest thing standing in our way is budget. Budget can keep us from showing our work, getting started on YouTube, showcasing who we are as a graphic designer or creative professional. So these Sandmark lenses allow you to take a quick 150-ish dollar leap into showing your work and getting started. A lot of times you don't have that $2,000 to get a full mirrorless setup, but you can snag one of these and get going. So I encourage you, I hope you do that. If you've been wanting to make the leap, wanting to get started, and you're curious if an iPhone can do the job, yes, it can. And here's an example with getting a little bit wider shot with 16 millimeter lens. I'm Benji Kaiser of BenjiKaiser.com. I thank you so much for Sandmark for making this video happen, and I'll see you guys here on the next episode.